exercise five, uh, exercise is five, and we're going to look at um, some basic synthesis um, using both additive and subtractive um, methods. And in the process of doing that, we'll introduce a variety of objects which will be useful to you, um, well, both for, for this kind of basic synthesis, but also that will be relevant later on as well. Um, <clears throat> so as per the uh, the exercise requirements on the right here, um, I've opened I've uh, well um, yeah we've got a, a, a sort of engine over on the left hand side here, uh, which comprises um, a new object which we haven't looked at yet, which is the cycle tilde object, and cycle is a uh, an oscillator um, object. It, by default, it uh, is a sine wave oscillator, um, but you can actually make it uh, uh, contain other wave shapes. Um, but for the time being, as I say, it's, it's a sine wave oscillator, and what's happening here is that um, there are a number of samples in what's called a wave table. Uh, there are 512 in all, as it happens, and those trace a a sine wave shape and cycle reads through that table so notice we are dealing with a notion of table here um, just like the i table um, <coughs> or a, a table object it's just uh, data that are stored um, vertically for every x um, index if you like um, but they trace as I say this this pattern um, cycle reads through that again and again and again and again and in doing so creates a regular uh, wave shape or wave pattern. Um, as I say, by default it's a sine wave, but it could be a different shape. If you, um, we will look later on at being able to draw in your own wave table, a wave shape into the to the table, uh, which will give you a more compre complex timbre. Um, but that's for another time. So um, the cycle object outputs uh, reads through that table. At, at the moment 440 times a second, so 440 hertz, um, giving us a tone of, let's turn on the, there you go, that tone, which happens to be a concert pitch, um, the uh, pitch that uh, orchestras tune to. Um, and that's being routed through multiplication object. I happen to have um, attenuated that signal to 0 0.02. Um, again, if we look at this, oh, I've closed it now. Um, uh, go back to here in a minute. Um, all the um, default oscillators in Max MSP um, operate between the values of uh, 1 and minus 1. So they occupy the full available digital bandwidth, if you like. Um, <coughs> if you go beyond that, you might remember if I multiply beyond... Um, a value or well if I go beyond the values of 1 and minus 1 we start to clip the signal um, so that, that's our available bandwidth um, I am in this case attenuating to 0 0.02 uh, because it's easier on the ears basically um, but that's this engine if you like um, and it, by sending a value into the top left of the cycle object I can change what pitch it is outputting at so um, at uh, 64 hertz now uh, so again it's overriding the frequency that we've put in on as, a, as a, an initial argument and you can mess about with that pitch from here so our next I think that's basically all that I covered there and in the next um, on the next page I ask you to include a gain object and the reason I've asked you to do that is because let's just open where are we? 5, uh, 1, 3. Here we go. There we go. Um, the reason I've asked you to do that is because there may be circumstances in which we want to be able to control the volume um, at two different points along the signal path. So um, along from here to, to here, that's obviously attenuating to 0 0.02 of the original um, volume. But we're also, as I say, using a gain uh, object to control that as well. So why why would you have two means of controlling the volume? 
Um, well, I'm going to use this one to um, to con control my overall envelope. And I'm going to do that using tools that we've already looked at. Uh, unlock the patch. And I'm going to use a um, function editor. Which again, we looked at before in conjunction with a line object, line tilde object. And you will hopefully remember that if I connect that to multiplication object, I don't, which is obviously going to override this 0 0.02 number, and that's now irrelevant. I could actually get rid of that, but I won't. Um, and connect a button to the left-hand inlet. Well, there is only one inlet of this function object. Um, draw in a shape. <coughs> and I now have a uh, an envelope which is going to determine the... Uh, well, the, the shape or the loudness of my tone over time. So if I bring up this gain, uh, sorry, I need to, <laughs> need to turn it on. Okay. And again, the reason why I might want to have two uh, volume controls or means of controlling the volume is because this one here is, is um, being controlled by the envelope, but I might want to be able to change the, the overall level of that envelope. Um, by means of this gain control. So obviously, if I bring it up, we still have the sh same shape um, of amplitude change, but it's a different amount of volume change. So obviously, it gets louder, um, or the peak here will be louder if I have this gain value um, higher, at least in terms of the output here. Um, so we have a means of controlling the uh, amplitude over time. By doing that, I'm just going to check how much time we've spent. OK. Um, notice, incidentally, that uh, the if I if I hover my well if I yes if I hover my mouse over one of these nodules, we'll see that the range of this uh, envelope generator or the function object is between the lowest point is zero. Notice the y this bit up here. The Y uh, indicates that we're on zero. If I come up to here, it indicates that we have one. So we have a range of zero to one. And what we're doing is exactly the same as we did. Once again, I've got to go back to this multiply uh, patch. And <coughs> here we are, um, here we're multiplying by zero, so we get nothing output, uh, no, nothing being output. Then it ramps very rapidly to, uh, sorry, to one. Uh, I should have set limits on this uh, thing. Um, it lim moves very rapidly to 1, which means it comes to uh, as loud as it can possibly be. Then it attenuates to about 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 um, for, a, for a period, and then it ramps down to 0 again. All right. So that's obviously what's happening to the amplitude. But th that's the reason why we have those those limits because we can't, in this case, with a sine wave input, we can't amplify by more than uh, one, otherwise we will uh, clip the resultant output. OK, I'm going to stop there and carry on with the next uh, part of the exercise in the next tutorial.